Hey guys, welcome to a Tuesday bonus video. We have our regular video every Friday, but today is Tuesday. And today we are checking out my Radeon RX 570 and we're going to do a quick tweak guide. If you look on the left side, we've got the Radeon overlay under the GPU clock. It's running at around 1060-1040 megahertz and that is less than the card is rated at. So I've got an Asus Expedition uh, RX 570 with 4GB of RAM. It's the OC edition. I bought it last year. Um, there was a deal going on in Australia. It cost me only 199 Australian dollars, including shipping. So that converts to 140 US dollars. And it came with three games. So the value is terrific. And recently the RX 570 is also being mentioned quite often because NVIDIA just launched the GDX uh, 1650 and there's the debate going on uh, what's more important, higher performance or consuming less power. Anyway, coming back to the clock speed, the uh, RX 570 that I have is rated at 1256 megahertz for the boost clock. Obviously, it's not boosting anywhere near that. And that's what this video is about. I'm gonna show you uh, what you need to do to unlock the full potential of your RX 570. We're also gonna have a look at undervolting a little bit to save a bit of power. And what you're seeing in this video applies to the RX 570, of course, but also to the other cards like the 470 and the 480, as well as to, uh, to the 580 and the 590. So we are in the game Rise of the Tomb Raider with high details and I've also turned on 16x and isotropic filtering. And a note about the Radeon drivers, they have really uh, developed into something uh, with a lot of features. So we have things such as AMD Link. You can actually link your mobile phone and then you can uh, monitor all the stats on your phone and even change the voltages and the clock speed. So that's pretty cool there's also uh, Radeon chill and frame rate target control and of course what man where you can do all the tweaking and that's what we will be using however we will will be using the overlay software uh, to make it more interactive so all you have to do is press alt and R on the keyboard and it will open the Radeon overlay and to get uh, these statistics here on the left side you click on performance monitoring and there's a toggle button here you could also you can also use the dedicated keyboard shortcut. So let me press Alt R again. So at the moment we're getting um, 66 FPS. I'm gonna write it down, make some notes here. 66, 67 FPS. We're getting a clock speed of around 1,051. Yeah, it fluctuates a little bit. Let's say. 1050 thereabouts um, up and down a little bit the memory clock speed you need to multiply that with four so 1750 times four gives you an effective clock speed of 7000 megahertz the temperature we're sitting at 69 degrees we've got a gpu power of around 85 watts and the fan speed runs at 1705 rpm so fairly quiet so first i'm going to show you how to unlock the full performance and get uh, almost the full boost clock. So you have to go into um, Radeon Wattman, then click on temperature. And there's a slider here with the power limit. Now you can move that to the left. This will uh, basically give the GPU less power and the performance will go down, but so will power consumption and heat. So this is actually one way you can address the higher power consumption um, that is often being mentioned with the GDX 1650 reviews. Uh, move this all the way to the right. Then we're gonna press apply and I'm gonna get out of the menu and you just have to wait a little bit. Immediately we can see the FPS goes up it's now up to 77 fps so we gained 10 fps just by um, sliding that slider for the power to the right the gpu clock is now a lot higher so we went up from around 1050 to now 1240 thereabouts and it 
still fluctuates a little bit. We're still not getting the full boost clock and I will show you later how to fix that. The temperature unfortunately does go up so it went from 69 to 78 and it will uh, keep climbing up to a little bit above 80 degrees and also the power uh, reading is now 124, 125, 127, so it's a lot high as well. And we can also see the fan speed is ramping up. We're now uh, at around 2300 RPM. And you're not going to hear this on the video, but the setup is right next to me and it's definitely a lot louder. Now, two things we can address. The first thing is we're still not hitting the full boost clock of 1256 so we're missing out on a little bit of performance and um, the power consumption and the uh, temperature and the noise is a little bit on the high side and we can fix that by underclocking the sorry by undervolting the GPU so we press alt R and I want to refer to a nice chart I've seen it in uh, a video that adored TV um, did on his YouTube channel and it shows uh, a curve and there's a re relationship going on between the clock speed of the Polaris GPUs and how much voltage you need to drive it and up to around yeah a thousand uh, 1100 megahertz you get away with fairly, fairly low voltage but then any any increase in clock speed and you need significantly higher voltage. But looking at this um, diagram, and this shows like the average silicon quality, um, if you can put it that way. Um, the card I've got is an OC version, so maybe it's binned with slightly better quality silicon, I'm not sure. But on that chart, um, if we follow the diagram, for 1250 megahertz, a voltage of around uh, 1080 millivolts is necessary. So let's have a look at what, what voltage our card is configured. So you go into Wattman, GPU, down here, voltage control, toggle that option, and it's the last state, state seven. And we can see it's 1150. So that's. Um, a lot higher and that means that our card um, doesn't run at the optimum because the voltage is too high so let's lower it a little bit and that will actually allow the GPU to have more power so we're gonna slide that back and I'm gonna slide it back by a hundred millivolts to uh, 1050 so Keep a note on the left side, we're now at 82 degrees, 126, 27 watts, and the clock speed is 1230, 240. So let's press apply, and I'm quickly gonna get out of the menu. And you can now see that the uh, clock speed of the GPU is now solid at 1256. That's basically the uh, boost clock of the card that we bought, basically what we paid for. We bought a card with an advertised clock speed of 1,256, so it would be nice to get that out of the box. Unfortunately, for some reason, a bit of tweaking is necessary. Now, we can also see now that the GPU power has gone down a little bit. It's not at a sitting at 128 anymore. It's around 122, so it's a little bit lower. Over time, the temperature and the fan speed will also go down by a little bit, not by too much. And you can still play around with the voltage, see how low you can take it before you get instability uh, issues. And the reason why I recommend using the AMD Radeon overlay software is because it's interactive. You can see, you see straight away what's going on inside the game. And later, once you've dialed in your settings, you can then go into the normal driver in Wattman and dial in all your settings. Now there's one more thing I want to show you and that is um, pushing the power efficiency of a RX 570 to the maximum and I refer back to the chart again where we had a look at around 900 megahertz only 800 millivolts are required so we can actually dial that in. So first we can reduce the, hang on, the clock speed. 
clock speed is up here. State 7. So let's reduce the clock speed to 900 megahertz. There you go. And the voltage, we can dial that down all the way to 800 millivolts. Let's play, press apply and get out of the menu. So on the left side, we can see the GPU clock runs now at 900 megahertz. We're getting 59 FPS, which isn't too bad. So uh, out of the box without any tuning we got, yep, we got 67. So it is a drop, but it's not uh, game breaking. Most games will still run fairly well and you might have to dial down the settings, but you're still getting I'm just going to eyeball it, maybe 1050, 1050 Ti level performance, but look at the temperature and the power draw, it's now uh, dropping like a rock, um, I might run, let the video run, well actually uh, I might not, but if we wait a few more minutes, the temperature and the fan speed will drop significantly, and the GPU power draw is now 70, 75 watts, uh, under 80 watts, so we're saving a ton of power, we're still getting fairly decent performance and temperature and noise is going down as well so and that's what i like about these uh, radeon cards they uh yeah they're a bit for tweaking they're out of the box you might not get the best performance uh, straight away but if you spend a little bit of time and this is really straightforward it's not complex at all if you spend a little bit of time you can uh, either extract more performance and if you play around with the voltage uh, extract more performance uh, without yeah you're still consuming more power and everything like that but you can extract more power and lock in the boost clock as advertised um, and in games it will stay at that boost clock so it'll stay consistently fast and that actually makes me wonder when um, other people review the RX 570 and put the result in the chart are they actually playing around with the uh, GPU power are they just leaving it at default or are they moving it to the right side? I've got no idea. If you do know, do let me know. Um, I'm quite interested in that. And yeah, if you're interested in, to, in, 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 in noise, low power consumption at the cost of slightly reduced performance, then set the clock speed to 900 megahertz, set the voltage to 800 millivolts and you have Polaris at the most energy uh, efficient uh, configuration basically giving you the best uh, performance per watt and that's pretty much it now likely there's a lot more you can do overclocking and maybe pushing the voltage to extreme levels but I'm not too much into overclocking but I do like little tweaks where you get immediate results and uh, what I've shown here in the video is fairly easy to copy if you don't like the AMD software you can do the same thing with MSI Afterburner and Asus, for example, it's got its own software as well. So there are lots of different tools you can use. But yeah, maybe hopefully this is useful. Maybe you just bought an RX 570 or 580 or you're looking at one and you want to um, optimize it and make sure you're getting the maximum performance for your money. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Do let me know what you think. Maybe you had a Radeon already and you're already familiar with this stuff. Um, if not, let me know. Did you see an improvement? Did it work for you? Please share your thoughts down below. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. On Friday, we have our normal videos. And on Tuesday, every now and then, there is a bonus video. Just depends how busy I am with live stuff. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.